Hello guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to make a video um, just speaking a little bit about uh, Clan Wars builds and uh, meta. What the current meta is, what isn't, what's good to bring into Clan Wars. Um, it's a bit of an expansion of one of my last videos I made about Clan Wars. Um, but this time rather than speaking about the free builds to bring into Clan Wars, this is more of what can be brought into Clan Wars. Well, I mean, anything can be brought into Clan Wars, but this is more of a, a video just to kind of explain like what's good in Clan Wars and what isn't so good, um, what the meta is at the moment, um, and also for some of the newer players, like what maybe can we bring into Clan Wars that, you know, it's going to be viable and usable. Hopefully it helps a few people. Um, I'm going to rank, be ranking some of the builds and uh, kind of guns that we can use from like categories so starting from D, B and the worst going up through C, B, A and then also uh, there's another category we're going to include which is S, S being the best um, and then hopefully we can kind of shed some light on what's what's the right thing to do um, in Clamos and hopefully it helps a few people out. Um, also as well this video is going to be personal opinion so some people may not agree with the choices that I say which is absolutely fine. Um, also, as well with the current meta and the way that you know everyone knows how crossout works, like one minute everything's fine, and then the next minute all your favourite things are nerfed. In six months' time, everything that's in D category could be an S, and everything that's in S could be in D. You just never know with this game. You gotta keep it interesting. Hopefully, that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys later. So, starting off in the D category is the Tackler. Little tiny machine guns, uh, perk, increased resistance to all types of damage except energy damage. The perk is disabled when shooting. Um, the Tacklers used to be a very, very strong weapon in Clan Wars uh, way, way back before like the Punisher meta was around and Tacklers were absolutely insane. And before they did the nerf on them, these things were insanely accurate back when like aim assist was really strong as well. These things were like hitbox accurate, um, really tiny to hit. You know, they're hard, you can box them right in. They do fairly decent damage, um, but after all the nerfs that they've had and with, with some of the other weapons like the Punisher and the Aspects and Vindicators, um, Tacklers have just slowly been dying out. So, unfortunately, they get thrown into the D category, but for a beginner weapon in Clone Wars, it's an absolute great start. Um, they're cheap. Um, you know, you can throw four of these or five of these on a spider and it'll do you well. It'll serve you a good purpose. Um, most people like to use them on a Nova Cab. Um, you can try them on hovers, but I don't recommend it because the spread um, is really bad. And after the last nerf that they did to the tacklers, it made the um, it made the aiming like you know you you're losing like a lot of spread. Unfortunately, tacklers for me get thrown into the deep end and the D category, and that's where we're starting off with today. Next on the D category, we have Crickets. The further the target, higher the damage for every 100 meters to current target, damage increases by 80%. The Crickets are a great weapon, a great unguided rocket launcher for anyone that is good at predicting where your enemy is going. Um, if you've got issues with leading your shots, it's probably not a good weapon to use. Um, the damage these things do is absolutely insane. Um, now they are five energies, so ideally you're gonna want to run three, which then limits you to how much energy you've got for other modules. You know, if you want a cloak, then you can't have a reload. Um, if you want an engine or a verify, and again, you know, you're, you're limited on what you can use. You can try two, but really the the deal, the game changes really between using three. I wouldn't recommend just using two on their own. Uh, I've not really seen anyone use it. You know, people still do use crickets in Clan Wars now, you just don't see it as much anymore. The durability is pretty weak, um, they get taken off pretty easily. Um, they get used mostly on hovers, more so sideways hovers, so if you can use sideways you don't have to, you can use them on a normal hover. But um, ideally you're going to want to use three of these and probably throw it on a sideways hover. Uh, the blast damage on these is great, especially if you can hit people across the map with it, you know, do spawn shots or, you know, across uh, any, any kind of maps that you can kind of arc your shots over because they do have, like, bullet drop. Um, these things are great. 
Um, but unfortunately, there's just a lot better competition out there. So cricket goes into the category of D. So lastly, on the D category, we have Intenuate. Uh, explosion leaves a flammable liquid puddle dealing damage to all targets. It is a catapult that throws a big barrel of fuel. Um, the Incinerator is a very tricky weapon to use um, if you... A, you're not very good at predicting where your targets are going to be, and B, if you do not master the artillery sensitivity, these things are a nightmare to use on top of all the bumpy maps that you have to try and navigate. These things are a real pain to use. However, if you're good with them, they can be really, really deadly. Um, unfortunately, they're going to sit in the D category because at the end of the day, they are, um, they, you just don't see them much in Clan Wars. Um, the, the builds, are re they're really hard to build with. Um, there's not much you can kind of do with them apart from throw them on a little quick build that you can get in and get out with or you could throw them on a hover you don't want to throw these on a spider i wouldn't recommend it um but they just for me i think they're too big they're not got a massive amount of durability and uh, the reload's pretty slow as well and with a lot of people's builds these days you know it's kind of easy to predict where these things are coming from so they, they can be dodged easier um if you know if you're fighting full hover teams these these things are almost useless unless like you've got you're running cap cans with it so it kind of forces you to play super defensive if you know if you're getting pushed on one of these and you don't have a cap can um these things are almost useless um but other than that incinerators not much more to say about it it's a catapult it launches flamey goodness um but for me it's a d Okay, moving up to C category, the Spectre. Spectre's machine gun, direct hit increases the weapon's damage by 4% for 3 seconds, stacks up to 10 times, resets when you miss. Spectres are absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best purple weapons there is. Um, some people may not agree this goes into the C category, um, but I'll explain why I think it deserves to be over here. Um, the machine gun spectra is really, really, really good. People really underestimate how strong and how much damage this puts out. Um, back way before I had punishers, these I used to use three of these, and these things strip uh, guns faster than almost any other gun in the game, bar like aspects and punishers. Um, these things are really, really strong. If you can keep that perk stacked up at 10, you're doing insane amounts of damage. Um, the letdown of this gun is it's a pretty big machine gun compared to the other machine guns, and the durability, as you can tell, is absolutely garbage. Um, one cannon shot anywhere near this gun, and it will take it off. Um, it's really, really weak. That was the only downside that I had about this gun. Um, unfortunately, there are better machine guns out there, so for me, this is why it belongs in the C category. But for anyone starting in Clan Wars, if you've got a good aim and a good trigger finger, this is definitely a gun you should be going for because the Spectra is really, really strong, and uh, you shouldn't underestimate it. Very, very good gun. Next on the C category, Imp. Um, I can't say much about this gun. It's a rapid fire machine gun, increases the image dealt by all rapid fire machine guns by 5%. Um, personally, I've never owned Imps. Um, I probably won't ever own Imps unless by some sort of a miracle I decide to buy everything on the game and then at some point I will have Imps. But for the near future, I will not be buying them. Um, especially up in higher league clan wars, you don't see them get used much. I can't really speak about lower league clan wars. Um, the, the issue with imps is the range is absolutely shocking. They're almost like on par with shotgun range. Um, and the, the damage, like if you're not closer than shotgun range, the damage is pretty bad. Um, and also the spread, uh, the, the accuracy on this is a lie, it should be one. <laughs> um, the durability as well is another thing. It's it's a really really weak gun. Um, unless you're running like four or five of these, I just I just really don't see the point. Um, there's there's so many better guns out there. Um, but it, it you know I, there's been times where you can run up on someone with four of these and five of these and absolutely rip apart a build. Um, but you know that again they are so weak that they can be taken out by so many different guns. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of better guns. Unfortunately, these will sit in the C category. Okay, next up, C category still. Uh, we have Nidhogs. Uh, these are uh, shotgun reloading shotguns. Um, they are not like shotguns like breakers or, or, sh or hammerfalls or thunderbolts. They don't require seals. 
they work off reloading modules. So the perk for these are higher you car speed, faster weapon reloads, and you get efficiency plus 20% when you're going faster, 80 kilometers. These are interestingly good, but again, the range, if you can see, is almost non-existent. You don't see many of these people use these. Um, I can name a few people that have really good builds um, with these paired with a Yormungunda, if that's how you say it. Um, th these things can be deadly, but I feel like th for the range, unfortunately, like unless you unless you're running a full close rush team, um, I don't think these do as well as some of the other shotguns. Uh, the damage is pretty good, uh, but you, again, you're kind of forced to run these with a lot of like you know you're gonna have to have reloading modules and then um, you're gonna have to run possibly a griffin carb maybe or a, a beholder to, to cloak up and get where you need to be um for, for me i don't feel like they i don't feel like they're the best shotgun they're definitely not the worst but they're not the best either and but they definitely do play a good part in clan wars i have seen people do some good stuff on these so i'm not going to throw them throw them in the garbage um but i feel like i don't think they can sway any further than a c for me next up uh, Seeker Ugri still uh, in Stillwind. The invisibility effect after the shot lasts for three seconds doesn't affect other ways of deactivating invisibility. So basically, the perk of this gun is if you are cloaked um, and you shoot, you will stay cloaked for, I'm guessing, three seconds and then you will uncloak. In that space of time, you can probably get about two shots in. I've not had still wins apart from the Battle Pass one, so can't speak much about it. You do not see these used much in clan wars. They have pretty good damage. However, the fire rate is very slow. Um, the durability is not great considering how big these things are, how tall and much they stick up. They, they stand out a lot. Um, and they are just, there's just better, better auto cannons out there, um, which we can speak about when we come to it. We already know what it is. Um, still wins though, however, they are, they are pretty accurate. And they do hit out some good damage numbers, but you will have to run three of these for it to be viable, I would reckon. And then that's putting you at 15 energy, so it only leaves you with one. And the, unfortunately, the time to overheating, even though it says it's pretty good, I know that still one got a buff in, um, I think it got a buff in time to overheating, but I still feel like you would have to run a a, um, a seal with this to make it work which then puts you at your max energy for 16 so for me i don't think still wind gets a uh, gets that much love much higher than a c category next up we have the baby mastodon or the mammoth direct hit increases the weapons damage by 20 percent for 10 seconds stacks up to three times resets when you miss mammoths are a baby mastodon they are uh, a good uh, turret cannon and um, they have a very decent durability um and they weigh an absolute ton almost one of the heaviest guns in the game um these things are pretty good at ripping the shit out of your enemies if you can keep the stat if you can keep the perk up and keep hitting your enemy they actually do some really good damage um unfortunately the last nerf they did to the mammoth was uh, a reload nerf and they made the reload even worse than it already was so it almost forces you to run a reload module or you're going to be reloading once a week because these things reload super slow. Um, and as long as you're running a super heavy build, um, you should have no problem, but these things weigh 2,600 kilos. So two of these is going to take up a lot of your mass limit. So unless you're running a heavy spider, you're going to struggle running these things than anything else. Um, I have seen people use hovers before with them, um, but you know if you're just starting out and you, you this is like one of your first legendaries, chances are you're probably not going to be running this on a hover because you're probably not going to be running fused hovers. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say about uh, the Mammoth, but it is a good turret cannon, definitely packs a punch, so you can give that a try in Clan Wars, it will, um, it will definitely please you, it's a good weapon, C category for the Mammoth. Next up on the C category, we have Shunemi. Um, it is a fixed cannon. If the armored vehicle is stationary for two seconds, damage from the next shot will be increased by 30 seconds. Um, this gun is interesting because 
it used to have a really cool perk where it was almost like a penetrating shot. Um, if I believe rightly, they actually got rid of that perk. Um, it don't actually say it here, but I believe in one of the older patch notes, um, it does cover that they got rid of the um, penetrating perk which was a bit of a nerf, I guess, because the Tsunami perk was really good. Um, it, with the perk of this gun as well, it kind of forces you to be on a spider because it's almost impossible to get the perk charged on a hover, apart from when you first spawn. So you can probably get one use of it, and then for the rest of the game, it's almost useless. So for that reason, it would kind of force you to be on a spider if you want to keep using the perk. And also about this perk I really don't like is, like, it just forces you to just play, like, really really like stationary which i don't really me personally it's not my play style so i wouldn't like it um i don't know maybe maybe you might be into that thing you might like just sitting in the corner and just sh <laughs> shooting down lanes just hold, waiting for two seconds to get your 30 uh, percent um but yeah the tsunami it's um it's very similar to the typhoon in terms of like uh, the projectile speed and the um, the, re the 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 drop of the gun. Um, other than that, it's just a weak a weak typhoon. Um, if you want typhoons and you want to see if if you can't afford them though, this is definitely a gun to try. It's it plays very similar to the typhoon. Um, if you don't like these, then you definitely won't like typhoons. But they do, you know, they do pack a punch. Um, nothing like the typhoon, but. They will, they will put some smiles on your face. Um, they weigh 1,800 kilos, so again, you know, they're quite heavy, not as heavy as some of the other guns. Um, durability is not too bad. The um, if you want to run these on a hover, you probably want to have um, at least something fused on your hover, whether it be the cab for power or some hovers fused for power or something, just to make it a bit quicker, um, or at least try and make your build as quick as you can. These things probably better to be used on a hover more than a spider, um, just so you're quicker to be dodged. You can dodge. Like I said, the durability is okay. It's not the great. It's not the worst. Uh, but you're probably going to get stripped pretty easily on a spider. Um, so yeah, that's the tsunami. Okay, set category almost over. Uh, Arbiter, we have machine gun mini guns. Um, longer the weapon fires the higher its damage after seven seconds of un uninterrupted shooting damage increases by 150 percent um the arbiters are actually a really good weapon and um, they are very very good with an aurora if you run three of these with an aurora um that's what most people run tend to run you can run four but i do believe the dps is actually better with three and an aurora um they're only free energy as well so that only puts you at like uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, my maths is really bad. So yeah, you can uh, definitely would need to run at least one seal, maybe two with these. Um, over time, these things start to pack up the damage really quickly. Um, but that also is why this is in C category, because it takes a good few seconds for the perk to get up to maximum um, and most people with a bit of sense when you're getting hit constantly they're going to move from f to into cover so by the time you're at perk with these chances are unless your enemy's got nowhere to hide um, these things are probably going to be at perk by the time your enemy's hiding so uh, that's why they fall into category C um, nevertheless they're a good machine gun uh, sorry minigun they're not a machine gun it says there minigun stupid muzzy um, if you want to try another minigun out um, to see if you like the arbiters you could try the equalizer um, it's a cheaper alternative um, it's basically just a weaker version of this um, the durability is okay it's just what you'd expect from a little tiny gun um you want to box these in pretty well because again they're only small um but yeah that's the other next up and also last in the c category is the flutes now i know there's one person on this game that will completely disagree and we'll put this in s tier and that's only because it's probably one of the best flute players in cross out on playstation that i know and for the people that know who it is can probably leave a comment and they will all get it right um it is a guided rocket launcher for each second of the rocket's flight the explosive damage increases by 18 percent so the reason i'm going to put these in the c category like i said some people will not agree with this um i think a few people will agree with me on it these are extremely hard to use if you um can't get the laser right like and the way the way i say get the laser right you've got to aim obviously you aim that you guide the rocket yourself it's a guided rocket launcher um 
I played hovers for at least two and a half years, and I'm pretty confident to say I'm a good hover player. Um, I have tried to use these things multiple times, and no matter how many times I try to use them, uh, I just cannot use flutes at all. Um, I have a good aim, but for some reason, every time I aim with these things, uh, with the laser, even if I'm aiming at someone, they always seems to either go behind the build or in front of the build. Um, I know a few other few people that are good hover players that have exactly the same issue. It must just be the way that flutes are. There must be a like a secret trick um, to to use them. Uh, these things are really really deadly. People that are good on them said players are uh, good on them uh, really really can make these things work like a relic um they're also really cheap uh, you'd probably need at least five or six to make it uh work well they're only two points of energy so what running five or six is not going to eat all your energy um but yeah flutes is a very interesting weapon it's it's very strong for someone that's good with it if you can master flutes um you can be really really deadly um these things are absolutely insane on a with a good player um for someone like me that can't use flutes at all they're absolutely useless so for me uh, they fall into category c because um unfortunately for a lot of people they are uh, they're quite hard to use and that is uh, the end of category c so moving on to d Category. Okay, so we have the Vindicator, Frontal Machine Gun. Weapon heats up, its damage resistance increases up to 5%. The Vindicators are very, very, very good. Uh, very good machine gun. Um, they are... Even though the durability is only 200, don't be don't be fooled by this number because the perk will can almost double that number if um, you, you know if you keep firing. Um, that's not just to say hold hold the trigger down and just constantly fire, but if you're constantly engaging the enemy, this durability is going to be a lot higher than that. It will feel like you have a lot more than 200 durability. And also as well, the great thing about Vindicators is they're only four blocks wide and two blocks high. So these things are perfect. They're like little squares. They can fit into the tiniest parts of your build. You can box these into like really, really hard places to strip. Um, and the damage on these things is really good. If you run five of these, um, I believe they do more damage than Punishers. Um, you'd have to go and test that. I've not tried it myself. Um, but these things are absolutely great. You can run four of these and still be great on a heavy spider. You can run five of these on an over spider. Vindicators are really, really strong. Um, I used to have Vindicators. Um, they're a bit inaccurate uh, compared to like Aspects and Spectres. Um, they've got a bit more spread. You will notice this. Um, so I definitely would use these on a, on a spider. Um, probably not so much a hover. Um, but these these are really strong, um, definitely uh, a B category for me. Um, they don't weigh much. They only weigh free energy. They only cost free energy. So again, you know this this is a really good weapon. Um, you can pair these up with the uh, I think it's the protector, which is the purple one. Do you know if you've not got that much money? Um, but I would definitely throw at least four of these on a spider, and you'd be you'd be surprised how much damage they do. I think that's Vindicator. Vindicator is a very good gun. Next up, we have the Aspect Dish Machine Gun. Um, I also call these Baby Punishers. Uh, the higher the weapon's temperature, the higher the damage at full heat. Damage increases by 60%. Um, currently, um, I used to have Punishers, and I have gone back to Aspects. The reason being is because I used all of my Punisher money to do some other stuff. So um, I will be getting Aspects again. Uh, sorry, I will be getting Punishers again. However, Aspects are the next closest thing to Punishers. These things are absolutely insane. If you can keep the temperature of this gun like above 40%, um, you're doing pretty much consistently double damage all the time almost um uh, it'll feel like it anyway um the the spread on these is almost minimal um providing you are just holding down the trigger um the durability is not the best but these have actually got a smaller hitbox than the spectres um and they've also got more durability this is why i've put these in uh, b category instead of c um they only cost four energy so you know you can run three of these perfectly fine and do good damage um these things are really really good like i said i'm using these at the moment i'm just kind of in trade of the punishers until i get them because you, you need aspects to craft punishers um these work equally as well as punishers um on on a good for a good machine gun player these are really really good um yeah they're, and they're not even expensive they're like 5k maybe 6k 
So you know, if you've got the money for it and you want to try, you want to try up for getting punishers. The, you need aspects to craft punishers, so there's no reason why you shouldn't get them to try them. Um, very good gun, and uh, they can be deadly in the hands of a good machine gun player. Breaker B category still. So breaker shotgun. Um, when the weapon receives fatal damage, it becomes invincible for one second. Cooldown for five seconds. Um, these guns. Uh, I used to have breakers a long time ago. Uh, this was before the uh, shotgun nerf, so maybe about a year ago when I had breakers. Um, the shot. The breakers used to have a stupid range, um, which was actually really annoying. And I think for that reason, it was a bit overpowered, and a lot of people complained about it um i think where the breakers at now are kind of in the right spot they um they don't have they almost have half the range that they used to have um these things could literally hit people from like 100 meters it was stupid um now they kind of hit where shotguns are supposed to hit um they are more suited to close range fights like they should be um, this is definitely without a shadow of a doubt the best shotgun in the game um, the reason it falls into the B category is um, There is a lot of machine gun players including myself um, that like to Destroy breakers in a heartbeat um, Unless you've got these boxed into a build which is really hard to do these things get stripped pretty easily um, from a, especially from a, like a good uh, machine gun player. I know you have a perk there which gives it an invincibility for one second, but a good machine gun player can completely um, negate that perk in, in a, like a matter of seconds. Um, with them being five energy as well, m most people only will run two of these. It's rare that you'll see people with three of these. So um, literally, like you've only you're down to two guns, and uh, they can get taken off fairly easily from a good machine gun player. So unfortunately, they only belong in the category B for me. Um, if they still had the range they used to be, I would put them in the A category. Um, but because of the the range nerf and uh, also the spread, which I think they messed around with, um, they don't sit any higher than a B for me. But nevertheless, it's still a great shotgun. Um, if you've got the money for it and you like shotgun kind of play style, this is definitely the shotgun for you. Next up, uh, B category still, we have Cyclone, a uh, auto cannon. Um, longer the weapon fires, the higher rate of fire. Uh, Cyclones are literally the best auto cannon on the game to this day. They've been one of the strongest auto cannons, or if not the strongest auto cannon, um, as far as I can remember from playing this game. Um, I always used to think it was a cool gun when I first started. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Um, three of these things do absolutely insane damage. Uh, the last update they got uh, a few months ago perhaps was a durability increase so these things are actually now over 600 i believe they were less than 600 um, don't quote me on that um, they are five energy so you know if you want to run free it kind of restricts you on what you can run um, and you kind of need a seal so you'd have to have three in one seal um, but the increased durability just does help a lot um, now the only downside about cyclones is obviously the how big and wide they are these things are so easy to hit with almost every gun in this game um scorpions can take these off across the map because they're so easy to spot um machine guns can take them off easy you know because they're just big hit scan guns you you can you've got all this massive massive hit area to aim at um however these guns absolutely shred off armor if you want to you want to completely take off the armor your enemy these things are great um the explosive damage on these is really great um i would probably run something like this on a nova cab most people run these on a nova cab um you can run hover you can run spider Um i would probably wouldn't recommend a wheel build definitely be a spider or a hover um but yeah the cyclone it's a great all cannon um if you really wanted to you could run out on a harp here um but then you obviously you, you're risking the no shield without the nova and like i said they are they are big hit scan weapons so they're very easy to um strip even though the durability is so much uh, you'll find that these things are getting hit almost every time you're getting looked at but nevertheless cyclone it's a great gun um for someone that's wanting to try a new legendary this is this is one of the guns that i would definitely go for the b category still next we have <coughs> locust <coughs> unguided rocket launcher 
If both rockets of the volley hit the target, increase blast radius of the next volley by 30% for 5 seconds. Now, if you had asked me 6 months ago, the Locust uh, would have been probably not even in this video. I wouldn't have even put it in the D category. Um, but now, to this day, I would put this in the B category, maybe even A. Um, the amount of people that I've seen in even top 5 clans using this thing, we use it in our clan. Um, these things are absolutely insane. The damage that these things put out uh, is, is, is just unbelievable. There are only four points of energy, so you can run three of these and still have four points of energy left. Um, they're really, really tiny as well. So like you can proper, you've got to proper box these in somewhere because the durability is like only a hundred. So like you can literally get looked at and these things get popped off. Um, however, they don't weigh anything, and like I said, they're really small. So these things are great. Uh, just you know hiding right back um these are i would say miles better than the crickets and this is why i've put the crickets in d category because these shoot faster and reload faster um they only shoot two rockets instead of uh, i think five is the cricket what the cricket shoots but like i said you can have three of these and they reload quicker um and honestly i think the perk is better too um and these things are really really strong i don't underestimate locusts um i know a lot of people that use these a lot of good players and i've seen um i've seen good players use these against people on relic builds and they make them look like they're on a relic build themselves a uh, very very good unguided rocket launcher they did actually used to be really cheap um, but unfortunately now that everyone's kind of gathered that uh, the locusts are really strong and also with the event on at the moment these things have shot up in price so now they used to be like 300 coins and i think the they're almost around a thousand, um, but definitely a good rocket launcher to get your hands on if you like the uh, they feel like that kind of playstyle. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it on a sp uh, spider. Um, probably more lean towards a hover, just just to have a, like a little fast nimble build. But yeah, locus for the B category. We have the retro grenade launcher. Further the target, the higher damage for every 100 meters to current target damage increases by 230%. Um, retchers, uh, I'm sure you all know what the retchers do. A big fat grenade launcher, absolutely perfect at aerial denial. Um, these things are really, really, really good at stopping um, people from pushing uh, certain areas of the map. If you want to stop someone from pushing around the corner, you just aim in that direction and i guarantee you your enemy will not push you unless if they do then they're pretty stupid um these things do crazy damage as well like from distance like you can shoot these over walls over hills over the buildings like the range on these is really really good um and the best thing about that as well is if you can kind of predict where your target's going to be most people have some sort of radar on the team um if you can hit people with these like from a distance like obviously the perk there for every 100 meters you get an extra 230 percent um the damage is crazy like a full volley of wretches on top of your head from a distance could really do some damage um unfortunately the durability is absolutely garbage these things are huge and they're only 200 durability this is a punisher's wet dream because these guns come off so easily um almost anything to even just look at this gun and it will fall off your build it's like putting tissue in a swimming pool um other than that there's not much to say about the wretches the six energy you can run two of them that's all you need um i would probably run these on a nova again um nova's pretty popular cabin clan was and um the nova is probably one of the best cabs as well to use with this you know you can peek your enemy with the, with your shield for a few shots and then quickly hide again you can get some get some good numbers with these um that's the retro Okay, next on the list is Helios B category. There is a reason I fuse these things and they are absolutely deadly. I have no idea why uh, in Clan Wars more people don't use these things. I don't know if people are scared of using them. Um, I don't know if people are just like unsure about them, but these things are absolutely insane. Um, they are pleasure emitter. The enemy's cabin is dealt additional damage if all projectiles of the volley hit the target. So if you hit, say if you hit uh, all of you, I think it shoots uh, yeah five plasma pellets. I should know this. I've used them for so long. If you hit uh, all of your burst on your enemy, say if you hit them on the back in the corner of the build, as long as it hit every one of your bullets hits the enemy, you do an additional, I think it's 75 cab damage as well. 
um, straight onto the cab. So if you're constantly hitting somebody, even if it's not in the cab, you're doing bonus cab damage as well. These things are absolutely crazy if you get um, some heat on your team, like a, a Mastodon or a trombone um, and if you if you focus someone on the cab with these things the damage is absolutely crazy do not underestimate helios these things are scary to run up against um if you're a squishy hover and you're getting focused by one of these you're not going to last long um the durability is not the best uh, they kind of fall into the machine gun durability category um they only weigh 250 kilos so they're not too bad um, but you're going to want to run a power unit with these just to make them the DPS a bit better. Um, they're only two energy. Um, the Helios, yeah, definitely a good gun. You could even argue that this could fall into an A category. Um, for me, this would be A category, but um, for the majority of people, this would probably fall into a B. So that's where I'm going to leave the Helios. B category, uh, we have Destructor Laser Drill. If the beam hits an enemy entirely at the end of the shot, an additional... Uh, it additionally heats up the parts and deals 800% more damage. Um, the Destructor. Now, this gun is, again, it's just another, some would say, broken gun. Um, I'm not going to say it's broken because um, it's, it's very blasé about how you can use it. Um, you have to for this per in order for this perk to work, you literally have to have pinpoint accuracy. Um, even if you miss for a split second, obviously you've got to hold. You you don't have to hold the gun, but you have to hold your aim onto an enemy. Even if for a split second that uh, beam like goes off your target, you don't get this perk of 800% more damage. Um, so that's what that's what makes it. Um, I wouldn't say a hard gun to use, but it's definitely harder. It's a higher skill bracket. Um, this thing. These are great at cabin people. If you have three of these, the only four energy, three of these and a build. If you hit a cab three times, um, I, let's say a spider, for instance, chances are you're gonna you're gonna have dealt over two thousand damage. So chances are they're probably gonna be over half dead or almost on fire. Um, these things are really really good at dealing cab damage. Also as well, good destructor players. Um, you can strip guns in one burst of three guns if um, if you if you're a good uh, if you have a good aim. Um, so yeah, don't underestimate the destructors. Very very good gun. Um, if you have multiple destructors on your team, um, if you have two people running the same uh, triple destructor build, uh, you can literally focus somebody out in a matter of seconds and get them get them dead. Uh, very very good gun. Uh, I wouldn't say overpowered. I think it's kind of balanced where it is, um, but the destructor is definitely a good gun for clan wars for two hundred percent. Oh, last gun in the B category is the Yokai. Uh, the Yokai is a plasma rocket launcher. If the rocket doesn't hit the enemy, its blast damage increases by 100% and its blast radius increases by 150%. Damage does de doesn't decrease as you move away from the center of its blast. Um, when I first this first gun came out, when this gun first came out, sorry, um, I didn't quite understand the perk. Um, it was basic, basically in stupid term. Like if you don't understand it, like when I re first read it, it basically means uh, the gun does more damage if you miss so it's forcing you to miss so anyone with a bit of sense would think well uh, hello why are you giving me a gun that's forcing me to miss um, however when people slowly learn the trick of the trade with this gun and realised how powerful it actually is um, there's a reason that this thing is up in B category um, the perk of this gun <clears throat> is absolutely insane um, I just recently fused these things in the event um, they are absolutely great at de-hovering hovers and if you manage to get enough hits on a spider you can do the same with a spider um it's a very very um it without if you've not run yokai before um you really i really can't explain it to you um for people that have run yokai you'll understand um it's quite hard to use it because you can it's it's a similar thing with the flutes like you feel like you can aim at someone say if you're aiming under a hover and uh, you can feel like to you it looks like you've hit underneath but sometimes it like it'll not register any damage and that's it's not because you've not hit under the hover but it's literally it's like you'll either hit it or you won't it's got like a weird i can't explain the explosion radius and it's it's really odd it seems to be better on a happy cab um that seems to be the best um but you can run it on other cabinet cabins um but the yokai yeah very very strong purple weapon um but because of its uh, semi-hard nature to use it 
um, this falls into the B, B category. And um, yeah, that's the end of the B categories anyway. Moving on to A category. To A category, Reaper minigun. The weapon Reaper does not overheat while shooting. If you do not know what the Reaper is by this point in your crossout career, then why are you even watching this video? Almost everyone has seen the Reaper. It is a legendary minigun. Um, and it requires absolutely no modules at all. You can run two of these with no modules and do stupid damage. Um, as long as you've got ammo, that is all you need. You can literally have 15 ammo packs and no modules and you'll do the same damage as if you had one ammo pack with no modules or eight modules it does not matter it's a minigun it doesn't need anything it's just the simplest gun for the simplest people no i'm joking i've got miniguns i've got fuse reapers these things are really really good in just about um every aspect of clan wars um, <clears throat> you can run you can be a single reaper on your own you can run a full team of reapers these things are great um there's not much to say about them other than they just do what they need to do um the thing with the uh, the, the reaper is they are constant dps so you can always apply pressure to your enemy as long as you've got ammo you can always apply pressure um ideally you're going to want to run two purple ammo packs with this um you don't have to fuse them but it does make a difference if you have your ammo packs fused because you do get quite a considerable amount of ammo difference um the durability is not too bad 500 uh the weight again 600 you know it's it's a six energy gun so you can't expect it to weigh nothing and they are quite big um, you are going to want to box these into the back of your build. You don't want them front and up top like a lot of people. I see people doing clan wars, they get stripped. They are fairly easy to strip, not because of the durability, but just because of like the, um, they're just quite an easy gun like target to hit in terms of size. Um, so you definitely want to throw these towards like the back of your build or at least box them in to some degree. I wouldn't suggest using them on a hover. I've seen people use them on a hover, but because of the uh, the, the impulse of them, it tends to push your build back, uh, which is a bit of a weird feeling. So I wouldn't recommend using them on hovers. Definitely uh, a spider gun, though. Um, a lot of top clans still use these. Uh, I don't think at any point, anytime soon, the Reaper's ever going to fall into any other category than A. If by some shot of a miracle they decide to make a relic version, then they may get pushed down into another category. But up until then, the Reaper is the best minigun on the game, without a shadow of the doubt. Category Mastodon Turret Cannon. Okay, so some people are going to disagree with me here. Uh, some people may agree with me here that it should not be here on A category. Some people may uh, argue it should be in S. Some people may argue it should be in B. I think it fits perfectly in the A category. A full charge, the first shot deals less uh, damage, but it heats all parts in the explosion radius. So the Mastodon, it is the best turret cannon in the game. It weighs an absolute shit ton. Uh, and it has also the best durability in the game. Um, this thing packs a punch into the living shit out of anything because this thing can literally one-shot builds that are built badly um, in the blink of an eye. Um, this gun can take a beating as well to high heavens. Um, these things are really, really, really good in clan wars. A lot of uh, top clans and lower league clans use them. Um, I can't see these ever being bad in the game. They're just a cool gun to use. Um, I've had them in the past. Unfortunately, not fused, so they, um, the reload on them is a bit slow. Um, as you, can, you can have a flywheel on them, but... Um, that is one of the reasons why I've not thrown them in the S tier because of the uh, the weight and the durability. Um, people that have got fused Mastodons will probably argue that they should go in the S category. But for peasants like me that don't have Mastodons fused, they have to sit in the A category because they weigh an absolute shit ton. Um, but the Mastodons are an absolute brilliant addition to your team. Um, they are strong. They have uh, keen capabilities, so you can help your team out. Um, and like I said, they pack a punch. So, you know, a few hits to the side of one of these things, and you are practically a cab on the floor. Um, there's not much to say about it other than it's an absolute beast of a turret cannon. Next on the A tier category is the Harvester melee weapon. Deals 135% more damage to enemies influenced by negative effects and to heated vehicle parts. Um, so I am throwing this in the A category. Uh, this is also going to come into the same category as the uh, the Lance and the uh, Spark. So basically a Lance car. I'm going to use this as a Lance car as example. Um, this is a uh, annoying little piece of 
kit that is in the game, unfortunately, but you know it keeps the game interesting. Um, these things are absolutely great at hover destroyers. Um, the, these things, you just I, if you throw one of these on a, with a lance and a spark, they just they are absolutely great at just doing what they need to do, and that is just destroying hovers. Um, they are awkward to fight. They did get a durability nerf, which kind of sucks for people that use them a lot because. Um, Scorpions can almost one-shot these off to the point they have like 16 durability left. Um, however, they are still a great weapon to use as a dog or a melee, um, for a melee build. Um, paired with a spark or a flash, um, and you do some really good damage. They're not so great against spiders, um, obviously because, you know, you're hitting legs and legs have got melee resistance. Um, but these these things are really good against hovers, um, and also wheel builds, depending on how the build is built um but yeah these these things are really good um very 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 good against hovers very effective uh, you one are probably going to pair this up with a spark or a flash though just to benefit from the uh, the perk of the um harvester yeah and that is the harvester up a category we have the Draco. Um, this thing is the flamethrower. Heats up parts on hit. We see what's 100% more damage depending on the amount of accumulated heat. Um, these things got hit with a nerf a few months ago. I think I believe it was a ammo nerf. Yes, it's only 100 pieces of ammo, so you need to definitely run an ammo pack, or you're gonna run out quicker than anything. Um, now, the thing with the Draco is because of how like uh small it is in terms of like width you can practically box these in um to the point of they're really hard to strip unlike like the remedies and the firebugs um these things are really hard to strip if you can place them in the right place most of the time it's probably better to place it underneath your build as opposed to in the middle uh, just because they're flat and the long they can kind of fit in between your frames perfectly um the durability is okay they do get a, a 90 percent melee buff so if you know if something crashes into area you're only taking 10 percent melee damage which is really good and obviously you've got spikes at the front which you can ram people with um but the the draco paired with the blight cab uh three of these um people used to moan that they did more damage than the fire bugs which i kind of believe they probably still do um oh i think they also had a damage nerf but again i you can barely tell the difference the damage on these is still crazy um very very good uh, flamethrower weapon uh equally as good as the um firebug which is what we'll be moving on to next next up a category firebug another flamethrower has exactly the same perk as the draco um the only difference is they have uh, more durability uh, they have a bit more ammo and they also have a 360 degree turning angle now the downside of the firebug is they are really big and they have a stupidly weird um hitbox meaning that like they're really hard to build around so you know if you don't have a good build for these they can get stripped pretty easily or they can kind of get like um uh, cross hair locked where they, there's certain areas where they won't fire um but they are again they're equally i reckon they're equally as good i'm not going to say the better or the worse than dracos because the dracos have got ups and downs and the, the firebugs have got ups and downs like you can you can obviously you can turn these and you can't turn the dracos but then you can turn the dracos um you can hide the dracos sorry and you can't hide these as much so i re these are equally as good as the dracos um the damage is good um i think it's actually it's probably a little better um but you would have to run free for it to be better i think uh, if you run two i think the draco does more damage so you can pair this up with a flash or a spark and the uh, you've got you've got yourself a good fire bug um durability is pretty good for them um they 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 I wouldn't say they're easy to strip, um, but you know, once uh, once a fire dog loses its hover catcher, um, they're pretty in your face, and with the big red barrel sticking out, it's kind of easy to figure out where you're aiming for. So they they can get stripped pretty easily once you lose your hover catcher on a dog build. Um, but if you've got a bit of money and you want something flame related, 
just go for the firebug if you're not too bothered uh, draco is equally as good next up on the a category is porcupine um okay so again some people may disagree with me um i think this just fits nicely where it is it's a mine layer uh explosion leaves a flammable liquid puddle dealing damage to all targets um the pork is a very very unique weapon in terms of there's literally nothing else in the game that's like it the closest thing that you could say is like it is fortunes and personally i don't think fortunes are anywhere near as good as pucks uh if you're like me if you've ever owned pucks not many people will have done um they are i won't say easy to use i won't say hard to use um they are interestingly different to use let's put it that way if you use these on a hover it's it's hard to kind of say how to use them because they're um basically if you watch videos of people using them um they're not necessarily where they're aiming is not where they're firing because you're almost kind of slingshotting the porcupines into where you're aiming so you kind of almost got to like aim ahead or aim behind i can't remember the correct path of how to use it it's uh, not been so uh, recent since i've had them so i can't honestly remember um but the damage that these things do is crazy i would at least recommend getting free um the durability is is okay um i mean they are pretty they're not too big they're not too small you can box them in because they're kind of square they're only three points of energy so i would definitely recommend at least having three um then you could have a cap can or you could have a spark or a flash to slow people down uh, however they are a really really good weapon great for the team um great at aerial denial similar to the retros um but yeah they're also really expensive uh, for a three point energy you're looking at uh easily 120 130,000 coins for nine points of energy so if you've got the coin great if you've not you may not want to look at for uh, porcupine and last on the A category is the Kaiju Pulse Cannon. If all projectiles are fully charged up and hit the enemy, the damage of the next burst will be 125% of the default. Um, this thing is really, really, really great. Uh, when the Kaiju first came out, um, this thing got absolutely abused. Um, people were getting cross mapped with Kaijus. Uh, they, they, they did a slight uh, nerf to it um, a few months ago because um it was just crazy like it was hit scan um the damage was crazy it still is crazy um this thing was just untouchable um where it is now is kind of perfect it sits where it sits now is nice um this thing is a very very effective long range um it can be effective at close range but it depends on your build and it also depends what you're fighting um it's a reloading gun so if someone jumps on you with a flash it's almost impossible to use again if you, you know something's fine you'll close like a dog or a, or a breaker or a, a build where it forces you to aim down and your build's not designed to aim down you're absolutely useless um the uh, the accuracy is absolutely amazing on this thing um if you pair this with a scope or even without a scope you know it's it, you can't go wrong with it a good range player can make a really good use of this um the durability is really good one of the better ones in the game it's quite weighty but the only thing good thing is it's 12 energy so you're only going to be running one gun anyway so the weight doesn't matter too much um and then it gives you four energy to use on anything else you want so um it gives you a bit of freedom um i think it did used to be 11 energy but they hooked the energy because again it was just i think it was just getting a little old a little much too abused um but the kaiju is really really good very very strong um if you can get the um if you can get the perk active on this and hit someone in the cab um you can do you can do pretty much four figure numbers especially if the cabin's hot um really really good gun to use and for a 12 point energy gun then this thing only costs a few thousand coins really really good weapon Hey, guess what? We are in the S category, the best of the best, only the best of the best will enter the S category, and we have the Punisher at number one. Uh, machine gun successfully landing fire shots increases damage by 100% for 6 seconds, each miss increases the number of hits required. Anyone that has played Clan Wars that has played against the Punisher player will understand that these things absolutely shred. Um, the durability is the best of all machine guns. Um, the damage is the best of all machine guns. And they are just without a shadow of a doubt 
the be- one of the best weapons in the game. Um, I am very surprised that the Punisher has not been nerfed um, in such a long time um, because uh, the amount of good players that run machine guns that run Punishers can absolutely devastate a uh, team with this. I used to have Punishers. Uh, if you watch some of my old videos, the Punisher is one of my favorite guns to use. I used Punisher for a long time. Still is one of my favorite guns. I will be getting them back at some point. Um, these things hit stupidly hard. The, um, there is literally not, almost no other gun in the game that hits as hard as this thing when you're at perk. Um, if you get the 40 shots uh, perk and then you get the 100% increase, if you have all three guns at uh, 100% perk and you're hitting someone in the face, you'll absolutely see the numbers rack up. Um, these guns are crazy, crazy hot. Um, very, very good gun. Uh, they're also very expensive, one of the most expensive relics in the game. Um, and there's a reason for that, uh, because it is part of the meta, and if it doesn't change anytime soon, then you will be seeing cl- um, Punishers around for the near distant future um it is a great gun anyone that loves machine guns that has a bit of money to spare 200 percent, i would vote in favor of the punisher it is an absolute beast of a gun category typhoon cannon hitting an enemy slows down its reload speed and increases its weapon heating by 40 percent for three seconds the typhoon is another great weapon of this game until recently um, if you'd have asked me a few months ago, I would have put this towards A category, uh, maybe even B. Um, but after the last uh, buff that the Typhoon got, um, that has bumped it up straight to an S um, category. You probably noticed a lot more Typhoon players over the last few months. Um, this is because everyone's been sitting on these lovely Typhoons, waiting for them to have a buff that they've also long deserved. These things absolutely slap. Um, I am kind of disappointed I got rid of mine almost a week before they got the buff. Uh, I'm not going to speak about that. Um, The Typhoon is, without a shadow of a doubt, the best cannon in the game. Um, Durability is great. Um, The mass is not too bad. Um, Two of these things absolutely slap someone into next week. Um, The explosion damage on these things is just so satisfying when you hit someone. It just absolutely shreds through um, spiders and wheel builds and hovers. It's just it's just a great cannon. Um, Stupidly, stupidly fast uh, fire rate um, in projectile speed. Sorry, and um, insane, insane shot accuracy shots as well. Um, any good hover player would favour the Typhoon uh, as one of one of the best weapons on uh, hovers for sure, two hundred percent. And lastly, but not least, we have the last S category gun today. We have the Scorpion. Uh, Pulse accelerator projectiles pierce two meters of any ammo with slight damage reduction. This perk is the biggest load of BS you will ever hear of this year. Two meters of any ammo. No, 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 no. Let me just correct you. This gun will not take two meters this gun feels like it goes through your soul and comes out the other side and goes through the next person's soul the uh, the penetration of this gun is insane um definitely one of the best guns in the game and unless they manage to somehow ruin this gun which i will cry about if they do because i've used them um i can't see this ever being a gun that just doesn't get used it's been used for a long time it's been one of the best guns in the game for a long time arguably um the the scorpion is just such a great weapon for the game um I, there's literally nothing else like it the piercing um per, the piercing elements of this gun are just great um it is i would say it's 50 percent skill 50 percent luck because i've seen bad bad scorpion players do some great shots on people and um, that you can just tell his look and then i've seen some good players do some crazy shit on scops um and just you know just deframing people in like two shots or popping someone across the map you know scop you can't do that with any other gun this gun is just built for that um it's a very very high skill bracket gun um however you know a good scorpion player can just completely change the course of a game um there's some really good scorpion players on this game as well and you you sit back and watch a good scorpion player and it's just so satisfying to watch watch um one of one literally one of the best guns in the game um and if you if you like the range kind of play style and you've got the money for it i would definitely choose a scorpions as one of your next guns Okay, so anyway, that sums up uh, the builds for today. Um, anything, like I said, I've not included 
um, in the video today or if I've missed something out, uh, just leave a comment. Um, anything I've not included is either I've forgotten, which I probably have done, or I don't see it deemed uh, Clan Wars worthy, uh, especially in kind of mid to high tier. Um, there is obviously other guns that you could throw in there, but uh, honestly, if I've not included it, I really don't think it should be used in Clan Wars. There's plenty of guns that I uh, put in the video that you know that are affordable for people. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Maybe learned something. Maybe not. Leave a like. See you later. Bye.